Chapter 244 After the Dark King Incident, humanity held a second meeting at the Free Federation. This time, unlike the first, the entire world's elite gathered. In Fire City, a group of people was preparing to board a spaceship. With humanity pushing the speed of spiritual power weapon research to the maximum, they finally successfully produced spiritual power spaceships, combining mechanical, electronic, and spiritual power strength, capable of comprehensive defense against monster attacks. A woman was advising Xiao Ling that this time, when she goes to the Free Federation, she needs to focus on two issues. First, to discuss the direction of humanity after the Dark King event, and second, the humanitarian crisis in Australia. Xiao casually agreed. In Europe, a complex continent with many factions hiding under the guise of the European Community of Nations, there is a notably powerful force called the Holy Order. These are the two strongmen of the continent. The young man said he was very excited to know he was about to meet all the world's elite people. The girl asked, didn't you meet them during the battle with the Dark King? At the Ten Nations Alliance, Lindsay and the Saintists were also prepared and would soon head to the summit. Meanwhile, at Misty Mountain, a messenger bird was tearing through the sky, none other than Aki, known as the Splash, carrying a message in its beak. The Divine Tree extended its branch to receive the message, immediately using a magnifying glass to read it carefully, murmuring, Hmm, hmm. So that's how it is. The Divine Tree understood that this was a positive move. In the name of the Free Federation, the entire world's elite had been called together, discussing only two issues, humanity's future and the humanitarian disaster in the battlefield area. The Divine Tree wondered if the Dark King had prompted humanity to unite more. Then the Divine Tree laughed loudly, realizing it was too naive. Even if humanity organized hundreds of meetings, that wouldn't happen. As for humanity's future, forget it. They would just end up arguing over resources. The Divine Tree then casually burned the message, but as soon as resources were mentioned, it squinted its eyes, knowing that Australia had abundant mineral resources, a lot of dark ore, and countless thunder ore. In the place where the Divine Tree resided alone, there were more than twenty mines. The only unfortunate thing was that there was almost no light spirit stone. Nine spaces had expanded considerably, especially the mist space and dark space, which had increased many times. When these two spaces expand to 100,000 meters, the power of the nine heavens would be somewhat demonstrated. Then the divine tree called Nine Tails and told her to inform the subordinates below that they would leave in five days. Suddenly, something startled the divine tree. It realized there was a fluctuation that the void roots had picked up. The divine tree immediately transferred its consciousness into these roots, its eyes flashing. Ahead was something that attracted the divine tree, a beautifully green planet. The divine tree rushed forward, and from this distance, the planet looked like an emerald, stunningly beautiful. The divine tree was bewildered, unable to believe that there was actually a planet in the void space. It turned out that the void roots had been continuously exploring from one void space to another, and this time, it had successfully found a planet with life. The divine tree, excited, could not wait any longer. For many years, humanity had been searching for extraterrestrial life, but this time, the divine tree had taken the lead. The void roots sped through the space, getting closer and closer to that planet. The surface of the planet was entirely covered in a soothing shade of green, with a shimmering light radiating around it, piercing through the clouds. Before the divine tree was a lush, dense forest, and beneath its canopy, a woman was walking alone. Oh, could that be an elven woman? The divine tree was startled, not expecting that there would actually be humanoid life on this planet. Returning to his true form, the divine tree broke into a sweat, his eyes focused on something very serious. It turned out that transferring his consciousness into the void roots had exhausted too much of his spiritual power leading to fatigue. Recalling the image of the elf girl, the divine tree was certain that she belonged to a high-level elven race, and it was very likely that they also possessed significant elemental power. This discovery truly intrigued the divine tree. Elves were supposed to exist only in novels, yet now they appeared so real before him, especially on a newly found planet. The mere thought of how many resources that planet might have was enough to keep the divine tree awake with excitement. Now, 
he only needed one more stroke of luck. If there were no creatures on that planet surpassing the transcendent sixth order, all his dreams would be fulfilled. The Divine Tree knew that defeating the Dark King last time was thanks to the system's properties, but he himself still needed to become stronger. Suddenly, Cheesy rushed over, calling out to his master, informing him that the whale Luo wanted to meet him at the Australian coast. The Divine Tree went straight to the point, asking the whale what it wanted him to do for it. Whale Luo reported that many forces in the ocean had chosen to join Misty Mountain. Of the Seven Kings, only two remained and these two were also fighting each other. This was good news. The Divine Tree knew that the time for unifying the ocean was approaching. He took the opportunity to ask, where is the five-headed serpent? Before Luo could reply, the sea surface shook violently. A five-headed snake emerged, its colossal body seemingly larger than before. The system panel displayed, mutated giant serpent, transcendent level four bloodline bloodline of Yamatano Orochi, the embodiment of disaster and legend, capable of absorbing negative emotions and continuously growing. Nature with talent, ultimate fear, when the bloodline awakens, the host can contain fear, absorb and grow from fear, and simultaneously heal wounds. Special abilities, deadly venom, a venom beyond human understanding, capable of corroding everything. Fear aggregation, when its eight eyes stare at the enemy, fear will be infinitely amplified, completely shattering the enemy's mental defenses. Serpent scales, dragon-like scales providing incredible defense. Serpent blood. The more it fights, the more frenzied it becomes. When blood flows, madness is inevitable. The divine tree was astonished. The five-headed snake now had three additional heads. This serpent thrived on fear far beyond the divine tree's imagination. The eight-headed serpent also mentioned that after the recent battle, it had successfully evolved to the fourth order. It had not expected that spreading fear to others and then consuming it would allow it to level up so quickly. The divine tree was very pleased and declared that the task of overseeing the ocean for the eight-headed serpent was complete. Now that it was this powerful, it should come ashore and team up with the white tiger. The task of ocean supervision would be entrusted to the whale Luo. The divine tree reminded it to conserve its strength. At that moment, the white tiger roared its master's name from the sky. Xiao Lam, with a face full of tension, shouted from the white tiger's back. The Dark King's subordinates have appeared again. It turned out to be the wizard cat. Finally, it had returned and expressed its desire to submit to the divine tree. The wizard cat slowly removed its hood as a gesture of sincerity, confirming that it was indeed true. The wizard cat added that this was an act of gratitude, as the divine tree had allowed its friend to leave safely. From now on, the wizard cat pledged its loyalty solely to the divine tree. The divine tree sensed that the cat was speaking the truth and agreed to accept it as one of his followers. The cat nodded politely in response. Meanwhile, by the seaside, the white tiger roared in horror upon discovering an eight-headed serpent, then gleefully exclaimed repeatedly, Everyone will die, everyone will die. The eight-headed serpent, exasperated, asked the white tiger how much one plus one was. Xiao Lam approached and petted the serpent's head. She had never imagined that she would encounter such a mythical creature in her life. Just as rumors about the largest creature on Misty Mountain surfaced, a mutated crocodile emerged from the water, declaring that it would not relinquish its bodybuilding championship to anyone. The white tiger grimaced at the crocodile and grumbled, everyone will die, actually complaining about the crocodile's water soaking his fur. The buffalo demon and Chang Chang also arrived, reuniting with their old comrade. They marveled at the enormous body of the eight-headed serpent, remembering how it used to be the size of a palm and was once snatched by the Sakura kingdom. Tian Cam, standing beside Lan Feng, also praised the Emperor Crocodile, reminiscing how it was once tiny and now had grown so large. It was truly fortunate to witness the Emperor Crocodile's evolution into the ancient Emperor Crocodile. Lan Feng teased, recalling how the crocodile had trembled in fear, thinking it was going to die. This comment made the Emperor Crocodile embarrassed, and it angrily told Lan Feng to shut up. Tian Kim suddenly remembered how she almost got eaten by the white tiger when she first arrived here. 
This remark infuriated Tian Cam's lover, the yellow ant, who immediately charged at the white tiger, demanding it repent. The white tiger was speechless, feeling unlucky to have a friend who would forsake them for a girl. The two wind wolves recalled the time when Xiao Ling and Xiao Qing were killed by the axe-headed snake, and they had been grieving for a long time. It was only with the arrival of many new friends that the gloomy atmosphere began to lift. The dinosaur turned to ask the two wolves how many battles they had fought. The truth was, they couldn't count them all. The mammoth asked the first ones to join Misty Mountain if they could tell the whole story. The nine-tailed fox stepped forward and said, All right, sit down. Then, the eldest nine-tailed fox sat on a high rock and began to recount the story of Misty Mountain's legend to her younger siblings starting from when she was being pursued by the axe-headed snake. As night fell over the lush green forest, the grass had grown tall, and the wind gently blew through, scattering particles of green spiritual energy like firefly lights, creating a beautiful scene. The divine tree rested quietly, but his mind was still awash with countless plans. The evacuation of the Misty Mountain Legion was ongoing with the mutated beasts continually being called to gather and enter the spaces. Black Dragon Ned also decided to leave for Africa, one of the planet's oldest continents, with its rich vegetation and diverse wildlife system. Unlike other continents, information about this one was scarce and closed off. Other continents had experienced three spiritual energy tides, but the actual situation here remained unclear. A powerful individual was chasing a vulture, wielding a battle axe. He jumped up and swung the axe, the vulture fleeing with a look of despair. Then, an explosion rocked the space, and the man successfully killed the flying mutant beast, his power truly formidable. Let's look at this character's attributes. Race. Mutant. Savage. Bloodline. Savage bloodline. An ancient bloodline, comparable to the physique and strength of a killer. Innate talent. Savage imprint can leave tattoo-like patterns on the body, but they are the most terrifying strength of the savages. The man laughed loudly. Ha ha, I won't have to worry about food for a few days in the village. Not far away, the space suddenly trembled, and rustling sounds echoed. It turned out that the divine tree had appeared. The divine tree hadn't expected the savage tribe to be here. It was known that they were a legendary race, with each member possessing superior pure strength and extremely high physical damage capability. It seemed the stage of history always had room for legendary races to appear. Speaking of the savage tribe, they were magnificent warriors, strong and fearless. As a mutated version of humanity, their high evolution likely held even more formidable powers, something the Divine Tree looked forward to. Thinking of this, the Divine Tree daringly summoned a space of vitality right in front of the man. The man, terrified and unsure of what was happening, gripped his axe tightly, ready for anything. From within that space, the eight-headed serpent emerged ferociously, instantly seizing the man's prey. The savage warrior ground his teeth in anger, unable to believe that the meal before him was snatched away by another. However, seeing the serpent clearly, he realized it was beyond his strength. The massive, powerful heads tore the prey apart and devoured it. The serpent then looked down, noticing another strong prey. It immediately sent two of its heads hurtling toward him. The savage warrior reacted quickly, jumping back to evade the attack. Deciding it was best to retreat, he turned to flee. Even the strong savages knew when to retreat in the face of overwhelming power. But a girl appeared, blocking his path. The flower goddess raised her hand, and a green spiritual energy emanated from her immobilizing the man. Was this a new technique? Cheesy, riding atop his master, praised the flower goddess. Well done, flower goddess. Sometimes you were quite useful. The flower goddess, not noticing the sarcasm, took it as a compliment and immediately beamed with pride, unaware that Cheesy had not finished his sentence. The divine tree assigned her the task of scouting this continent, evaluating the strength of the mutant beasts here, and of course, assessing the resource situation. The flower goddess, buoyed by the praise, immediately ran after Cheesy, asking if she could play with him now. Cheesy coldly replied that perhaps in another life, he would agree. The divine tree surveyed the surroundings, looking for a place to rest. There it was, 
a spot that wasn't too arid and seemed pleasing to the eye. The divine tree gently settled his massive form down, causing the ground to tremble slightly. Then, his enormous roots shot out in all directions, burrowing deep into the earth. Having found a place to rest, the divine tree continued his work. He opened a fiery space, releasing his fire elemental mutant beasts and declared, it's time to hunt. End of chapter 245